Hello everyone. Uh, let's try to remember all the games for today because I actually didn't see too many but I watched many highlights and you can see me wearing my 1965 LASK Championship jersey because my team did very well today. Although in the end it was not just enough but um, it was the big game Salzburg at home and you know Salzburg has won every game until last weekend where they drew a 1-1 to Innsbruck and now uh, LASK and they were up I think within 30 minutes they were 2 0 up, and that's basically the death sentence. But there was right after they had 2 0, it was uh, 1 2, and just before the uh, break, a wonderful goal uh, from acute Angle slammed it under the bar, made it 2 2 at half time. And they not only equalized, they actually completed the comeback with uh, our boy Otubanjo. Uh, volleying the ball into the net, 3-2, absolute ecstasy everywhere in Lask land. But then, yeah, uh, fortunately we don't have VAR in the Austrian Bundesliga, because otherwise I think Lask would have won, because the 3-3 was an offside goal. Hurts a little bit. But given that you make it 3-3 against the by far best team in Austria, and one, <laughs> one of the better teams in Europe, to be honest, uh, given the latest results, I think that's a uh, assuring sign and I'm um, quite positive about that. Um, before I go to all the other highlights, the other thing I'm positive about is of course Milan. That's the game that I watched. Uh, I didn't see the first 15 minutes, but we turned it on and I had a proud father moment. Um, I just went up to take off my jeans, get some more comfy pants and uh, my daughters are yelling Milan hat ein Tor gemacht meaning Milan scored a goal and I jumped down again and I saw yeah good Ronne uh, headed in a nice cross from Suso was actually quite nicely done um, unfortunately four minutes later um, Sampdoria out of sort of nowhere equalized uh, it should never have been a goal and then they even made the 2-1 uh, Cagliarello uh, and I thought oh, here we go again um, just in like just when I thought this is the goal that they needed to get going, um, they gave up two uh, relatively cheap goals. Um, now, top of my head, I, I don't want to uh, point any blame on these goals. But he going equalized. I thought already this will be an offside or whatever because I couldn't believe it, but no. Egoin's goal counted, so it was 2 2 at halftime. And it was a kind of a weird game. It didn't seem like there was chance after chance after chance. It was more, there were four goals out of almost nowhere coming, at least for the 30 minutes that I watched in the first half. Um, but yeah, I was happy to have it 2-2 and actually that galvanized Milan. Uh, again, the second half was not the game that I would say it was now clear that this is an open game. It was very tense, uh, everything dense, everything together. But it took a Sousa strike. I mean, Milan had the initiative, took a Sousa strike, really beautifully done. Uh, they reviewed it for offside, which almost killed me. Um, but yeah, Kutron was not an offside when Sousa shot, but he was running across the goalkeeper, so yeah, I would have probably understood it if he would have been offside, but he wasn't so happy about that. 3 2 win, they hung on to it, should have maybe made a fourth one. They made a fourth one, but it was not given for offside, and then they had a few more chances. I think Laxalt, uh, point blank range hits the post, <laughs> but I think at that point it was easier to hit the post than to actually get, uh, the ball into, into the net but yeah i'm happy three to win and now beat genoa milan looks better and let's get quickly to the other game that i watched live <laughs> sort of watched live i was more this was one of those where i was more listening i was watching listening watching listening as so it was of course napoli against roma um i saw the first goal by roma uh, i was kind of comically uh, el sharavi puts it in uh from the inside of the post Koulibaly wants to save it, it was already in at that point, wants to save it, but slams it against the goalkeeper <laughs> and it goes in again. <laughs> but the uh, goal was given to Sharavi. Um, there were a few chances by Roma, but it was mostly Napoli. And in the second half, it was almost comically how Napoli missed chance after chance. So when they scored two goals that were rightfully not given for offside. And then in the 89th minute, they got their Equalized that it was fully deserved. I think Napoli was by far the better team in that one. Um, two things on the two games that I saw the jerseys. Uh, first, first of all, I really like this Antonio away jersey. I just find that they have this stripe here, no, here on the left side, 
and also on the on the left side on the back and that looks weird because here it stops here and then it continues here if it goes all the way over i think i would understand more but the a bigger problem i have is that like gallarella is such a long name and you cannot read part of it because it doesn't pop out so much and some numbers go over the pattern i like when the front and the back is the same but i think it could have been solved a little bit uh, cleaner in my my, my opinion uh, but i also like that the blue pants also feature the same stripe going down and even the socks so very cool kit overall um, just this on the back didn't look quite right and for napoli roma i was thinking how would i like to play them ahead of and i thought maybe they maybe roma can play in their yellow but i said nah this is it doesn't play in the yellow it looked wonderful this is a jersey i like a lot the yellow one here okay we know what was the big game today and i'm ashamed to say i didn't see that i only saw highlights i was thinking shall i watch el clasico the full match i had the chance to do so but decided ultimately to go for highlights because i know i don't get highlights from napoli roma uh, that quickly i think it was a great game but you could see uh barcelona's first goal after 12 minutes by i think it was coutinho um lots of passing hardly any any, any any defending i mean it wasn't it was almost too easy for barcelona to score that one uh i think the barcelona after they go completely dominated real madrid they, uh I, the, the scenes i saw was really poor defending by real madrid and the penalties was i think the first war penalty where i, where I saw that uh, it was an actual foul that they reviewed suarez gets um the penalty i think before that um Coutra had a wonderful save uh on a shot from barcelona but yeah he slams it in Coutra is right there but there's no chance and i really like the celebration just became a daddy has his three children on there that was really cool i don't like suarez that much especially uh since he beat chiellini in the 2014 world cup but you know i think i made my more a little bit more peace with him Definitely like him more than the Brazilian noodle. Let's put it that way. So yeah, two nil up. And yeah, Lopetegui, bye bye now, but he actually galvanized the team and within four minutes, I think they uh, got their, uh, they cut the lead in half. Marcelo and poor defending by Real Madrid in the first half on that goal. And then Barcelona, I mean, they're standing around. Marcelo has the ball. And from the moment I saw this, Marcelo is standing there. And I thought, oh, must be Marcelo's going to score the one. Yes, Marcelo's going to score the one. Uh, like an uh, attacker. It was really weird. And then Real Madrid had actually chances. I think Benzema uh, missed a big one. Modric hit the post. Uh, inside of the post, it went out. Uh, at that point, it really could have gotten um, on the edge and about to turn. Barcelona had some counterattacks, one of which hit the uh, post as well. Uh, yeah, the, the Mall Maldish also hit, hit the post. So it was even there, and then Suarez um, on the counter makes it 3 1, and then Real Madrid fell apart 4 1, 5 1. Uh, from what they said in the highlight video, that this was way too high, the 3 1 probably would have been uh, appropriate as well, but 4 1. Five on no. I mean, Suarez scored a hat trick and then uh, Vidal scored the fifth goal. I'm sorry, Vidal at Barcelona. He is for me completely anti Barcelona. It doesn't make any sense there. So, yeah. But that was the big result in Spain Barcelona beating Madrid 5 1. Huge result. And yeah, we're going to see. I think Lopetegui is a dead man walking, at least in when you consider his job. Uh, other highlights that I watched was um, Ajax against Feyenoord. If you have a chance, watch this. Uh, first of all, there was a red card right in six after six minutes. Um, yeah, after VAR, where the referees <laughs> put out the yellow and says, uh -uh, and then points the red. And I think from then it was all Ajax on. Um, shirt wise, I like the Feyenoord has the Adidas template that we all love or hate, how, how, how we want it. But one side of the stripes is white, the other one is red, which mirrors the red white half half kit that they have i like that one but no, there was not much to like from feyenoord uh the first goal like the one from limassol um uh, frankfurt against Lim limassol the first one goalkeeper has the ball it goes between his legs he jumps back he actually catches the ball ahead of half a line but because there's an ajax defender there it gets pushed over the line 
it's an own goal, a horrible own, own, own goal. The second goal was a better one, and then Ajax added a third, and it could have been uh, five easily. So Ajax won that one easily. I saw Ajax, uh, Arsenal play at Crystal Palace, where Crystal Palace just went ahead right before the half and actually had chances before uh, that. Then I think Schalke with a wonderful free kick equalized. The go-ahead goal was offside and I wonder why the biggest league in the world doesn't have VAR. But yeah, so it looks like Ajax is, uh, Ajax, our, our Arsenal is going to continue their uh, run of winning games, but no, after 12 games, or 11, 12, whatever. Uh, they did not win now because uh, there was a penalty given, a justifiable, just a justified penalty, and uh, ended 2 2. And at the last thing, I just saw that PSG won Le Classique. So we had El Clasico in Spain, we had the Classica in the Netherlands, Netherlands. Uh, and we have uh, Le Classique in France between Marseille and PSG. I when I saw it, it was only the last 20 to 20 minutes, it was already 1 0 for PSG by Mbappé. And then in the last minute, the Rucks left a wonderful move over Neymar, made it 2 0. Marseille had few chances, but it seemed always that uh, PSG is well in control. I would like that this game is a little bit more competitive because I think that's the one game really, it's 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 called Le Classique, not for. So uh, this is the game that France soccer lives off. So it should have been more competitive, but I think this year the league is just, uh, you can basically hand PSG the trophy. Uh, I'm not sure if you can uh, uh, hand it to Barcelona yet. I think Juventus looks pretty solid. Uh, Germany is interesting, England is of course also interesting. I have not seen the results uh, of Chelsea yet, and I know that tomorrow Manchester City is playing Tottenham. Not sure if I'm gonna watch that one because it's kind of late, but I'm gonna give you my uh, thoughts on Tuesday in the morning. I hope you manage the time change. Uh, if you're in Europe, I'm really hoping this is the last time or the second to last time that we have to do this. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Although this one is the better one, still, I don't like it. Well, let me know what games you watched. Uh, if you agree with the assessment of the games that I saw, uh, let me know in the, in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked that video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. I'm going to upload this now and hope you have it in the morning and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.